What is going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action, patch action, overhaul patch action. There's been an update and it's time to go over the patch notes. I've been putting out some overhaul patch games over the past week, over the past month, however long it's been, I don't really know. Uh, I, the game was in a very, very early stage of the patch of my my patch making process 0.2 we're up to 0.5 i've had a couple of uh huge changes over the past couple of days uh been working away at changing everything but you know what we haven't actually gone through the patch notes in its entirety i'd love to share it with you the idea of this patch before we get into those notes is effectively i want to overhaul the power spikes in Age of Mythology, I want to change uh, some of the problems that are in Age of Mythology. Some of the stuff that I don't find is all too fun. Get rid of that stuff uh, and, and try and make the game a little bit more, uh, a little bit more skillful, a little bit more rounded, uh, and, and hopefully a little bit more fun. Uh, for those of you playing on Extended Edition, uh, this patch will most likely be available to you at the uh start of when the overhaul patch tournament begins basically when i feel like this patch is in a balanced enough state uh to run a tournament on i'm gonna throw it over onto extended edition before then i don't see a whole lot of point in putting out a, a patch that is not really finished yet so we're working towards making this power uh making this fun balanced and very very different so Let's get into it. A couple of things. We'll go through my thoughts on why I've made the changes. And you can tell me if there are good changes you think, bad changes, uh, whatever you whatever you really think about it, um, definitely let me know. Uh, so we'll start here. Archaic attacking has been disabled. What does this mean? Well, it means the Katoskopots can't attack. It means the Ulfsark can't attack. It means the Pharaoh, the Priest can't attack. The Oracle Hero can't attack. The Herser can't attack in the Archaic Age. Why is this a thing? Why do I... Net, why, every single age of Empire's game has got archaic attacking in it. So why, why change it? Well, the thing is with Age of Empires 2, for example, you start... Everyone starts with the scout, basically. I think maybe there's some civilizations that start with a slightly different unit. I'm not 100% sure. I don't play Age of Empires 2. I know the, the base game. Everyone starts with the scout. That scout has got exactly the same speed, exactly the same stats, so everybody can do the same sort of harassment in the early game. The problem is, in Age of Mythology, that Greek gets the Katoskopos. Egyptian gets the Priest. Norse gets the Ulfsark. And Atlantean gets the Oracle. Now, every one of those units, except for the Oracle, has damage. The Oracle doesn't even get damage in the early game. So... It's just not a balanced and fun situation to be in when one player has got a scout that has got 5.5 speed that can harass you and, and do a whole bunch of stuff with no problems for their own uh, their own early game. Whereas you move over to, say, Egyptian and one of the most annoying things that can happen is your pharaohs empowering the... Um, the granary, the Kitoska boss comes in, whacks the pharaoh. That pharaoh then misses an empower cycle or a, a resource dump from a villager, and then you lose out on three resources for no real good reason, bar that Kitoska boss coming in and whacking it. Uh, lots of other problems. But the, the biggest, biggest problem is that Norse needs to be building with their Ulfsark. And the Kataska boss can just sit there and whack that Ulfsark on maps like Anatolia, maps like Midgard, maps like uh, just competitive to make a random, uh, Calm Shores, etc., etc., etc. There's lots of maps where it's just not fair to play against the Kataska boss. So we're just taking that out. There is one problem here to to be concerned about, and that is the set conversion. Um, I've played some games where I've uh, had this happen to me already. It's very simple to play around. You just send a villager over there and you can actually attack the hunt, kill the hunt, and then whatever the set player is trying to do gets absolutely destroyed and you're fine. Uh, I find it much, much better that the set player can convert their own hunt, no problems. But if they want to go over and steal hunt, they're risking their opponent coming over and completely stopping their conversion attempts. I think it's a great way, a great change. And I think that set players... Uh, 
and, and players playing against set will find, you know what, this is actually isn't as much of a problem as I thought. And on maps that it is a problem, say maps like Marsh, you're not gonna really feel the, um, the missing hunt, so to speak, because there's just so much hunt on those sorts of maps. Anyways, next change. I think this is more of a quality of life change. This is the stupidest thing in, an, uh, in early game age of mythology to deal with, and that's the villagers miss hunt. I don't actually think this is a thing in any of the other Age of Empires games. I could be wrong, uh, but, we're just changing this and we're just saying they can't miss hunt anymore. So set got buffed, set got nerfed here. So set animals, they aren't, they're, they're going to be getting hit 100% of the time, every single time by, by enemy villagers. So uh, happy, happy days for everyone. But the, uh, the villagers no longer miss hunt means that you're, you're going to be able to be really efficient in the early game without having to worry that you're attacking your giraffe with three villagers and one just randomly shoots to the moon and the two others hit it and the giraffe walks off into netherlands and you're like oh dear well that's um that's awful so we fixed that happy days next one we are moving into the civilization changes i want to preface this by saying for the most part i'm trying to keep greek as similar to um as similar to the the base state as I can to have some sort of a balance indicator. If if uh, civilization walks in and they're absolutely demolishing Greek, it means that they are most likely too strong. Uh, so we're trying to balance it off of Greek if we can uh, and see how things go. So uh, the first change here might seem a little bit strange. We're actually giving the Kotoskopos a little bit of a buff. And why are we giving it a buff? Well, let's think about it. This is a very small buff, by the way. It's only up to up to five hack damage, but the buff is there because civilizations like Norse they get um, they get a buff on their old suck that goes up, uh, Herso goes up, Pharaoh goes up, Priest goes up, uh, even the Oracle hero goes up. Everyone gets a little bit of a buff going into the classical age, and Greek misses out. So this is just a little bit of a um, a little bit of an extra help. For, for Greek against potentially some of the early game buffs that are coming for the other civilizations out there. So it gets a little bit more to keep that early game pressure alive and, and the pressure that the Greeks are supposed to have. Uh, now, this is another kind of small change and it might be getting reverted to some degree, but we're te I'm testing out. I still haven't been able to really get a, a grasp on whether this is a good change or a bad change, but we're testing out making counter units more of a counter unit. So the idea is they're now going to be three population and their stats are going to be reflective of them being three population. Idea is that I don't want to see armies of Greek players going massive pass pists uh, because they have to or whatever. Uh, and then your opponent just having no real good answer to it for whatever reason. Like, for example, Norse players having to fight against massive pass can be quite difficult. So change this into a three-pop unit means that you should be able to mix this unit into your army. They should be doing much more, uh, being much more efficient by themselves and they're going to be able to be picked off much more efficiently by the opponent. So there, it's a bit of a trade-off. I'm not sure about this one. But this is where we're going, and we might be reverting this back to a two-pop unit. The more important thing is that the Peltast has been fixed. Uh, animation cycle is now one second instead of 1.3, which means that it's going to be able to ramp up to its uh, hit rate much earlier. It's also got a track rating of six, which means that when it's playing against Ra, specifically Ra, I think Ra is the only one that's got a five point, or Ra and, um, and also the Terma of, uh, of Uranus, uh, the Peltas is going to be able to hit those units and uh, it's going to be a, a very useful unit to have. Uh, I think this unit's going to be good. Uh, again, we can always move it back to two population if it's busted. I don't think it's going to be busted, but uh, or maybe it'll be too weak, so we might move it back to two pop. I'm not 100% sure there. Moving on, Hades. Hades no longer gets the Hades shades from the dead units. Instead, we're converting it into a myth unit that gets built for eight favor. Very, very unique unit. A favor costing unit is very, very unique. This might be too weak in its current state. I'm not 100% sure yet. It might be too strong in its current state. I'm not 100% sure yet. Uh, I'm uh, Even with all the years of experience, this is something that I wanted to go into a little bit with the patch. And, and one thing that I think that a lot of um, top players forget is that, yeah, you've got a ton of experience. You know the game fairly in and out, but you really don't understand the impacts of changes. 
So you have to make a change and you have to go and test it. You have to see exactly how it's going to work out. So one thing is that the Hades Shade now has a big counter with heroes. It's a myth unit, so happy days. The other change, uh, the other thing is that uh, another civilization that actually has a unit very similar to the Hades Shade in its current state is Egyptian. Uh, not Egyptian, Set. Set has got the animals of Set. They don't cost any resources either. They just cost favor. So it's a, it's an interesting idea. The Hades Shade is roughly costed at about 80 resources, but they're safe resources on the temple. So it's, a, it's an interesting unit. I wonder if it'll see use. It might get toned down in the favor costing. It might uh, get buffed up in the stats. I'm not 100% sure. We're just testing it out for now and seeing how things are going to go. So those are the big things for Greek. Moving on to Egyptian. Egyptian is getting a economic rework. Uh, reason for this is I hate playing Egyptian and having to rely on, uh, on having a gigantic economy to actually compete. My economy needs to go up to like 100, 120 uh, civilian unit count just to compete in the late game. And the reason for this is that mercenary and mercenary cavalry are incredibly stat effective, but they don't cost any population. So you're, tr and they cost a ton of resources to, to utilize as well, right? And they die after 60 seconds. So you, you don't just build it and then it's fine. You just wait it out. No. It's really, really annoying to play as Egyptian, in my opinion, because of this fact. And I think that a lot of players who play against Egyptian find it annoying as well. There are obviously some Egyptian players who really, really enjoy that gameplay. And I'm sorry, but I, I think that the uh, majority of people would rather see Mercenary either completely changed or uh, or do something or, or just get removed. So... Uh, I'm actually going with the removal approach. There might be a world in which I change mercenary and you'll see this in the Medjai tech. There might be a world where I change mercenary to be more of a one-off thing uh, where you can pop them out in a huge, uh, a huge amount of mercenary pop out at once. That's a defensive measure, uh, and that can be kind of like the Minutemen in Age of Empires 3, for example. But we're getting rid of Mercenary, and instead, we are changing the villages so that they have a much, much higher uh, base gather rate. Uh, effectively, the Egyptian gather rate is now at the rate of Greek, uh, which means I don't need as many... Uh, many villages in the late game to be able to produce units. I should be able to produce my strong units and compete with a Greek in the late game. That's the idea here. I don't need to have mercenary to fight anymore. Um, this has been bal balanced out slightly uh, by, well, actually, well, yeah, this has been balanced out slightly by all of the gold costing buildings increasing. So, a far second town center is basically going to be, you're basically going to have the resources for a far second town center around about the same uh, uh, rate as if pre-patch. So you're not going to, you're not going to feel the economic boost until later in the game is the general idea. So it allows the Greek player to get their boom going, get into their strong point and, and both players should be able to hit that late game at around the same mo uh, same part in the game is my hope. Yes, you do have a Pharaoh and Ra's got that priest helping out with the economy. So yeah, they've got more economy than the Greek, but you know what? Same thing as with the Norse. Norse have got more economy than the Greek, Greek as well. And it kind of works out. So I'm interested to see if this is going to be busted. There's always going to be a, a, an opportunity here to tone this back a little bit um, and still give the Egyptian players a boost to the economy by, I think, 5%. This is like a 10% boost-ish, maybe a little bit more than a 10% boost to their gather rate. So you can always tone it back by 5% and see how that's going to work out. Um, the monument's also just going to be a flat six favor a minute. Uh, and this is just to make the monuments a little bit less confusing. It's a slight buff to the overall favor. If you get all five monuments, it might be a slight nerf to, uh, to the monuments. If you don't get a couple of monuments out, um, I believe the, the first monument is a little bit more than six favor and the second monument's a little bit less than six favor. So it kind of balances itself out if you get two monuments. Um, another change here is that Hathor is no longer going to be giving you a rock to spawn. You only get one myth unit out of the temple. This is a personal change. Um, when I play against Ra, when I play against Isis and they go Hathor, you see Hathor and then you're like, shit, I got to deal with rock raids. And it's like, 
you have to deal with rock raids straight away. So you have zero time to prepare for it. Uh, and it'd be nice to just say, oh, he went Hathor. Okay, well, he might pick up a rock. He might not. If he does, uh, I'll deal with it then. Uh, it gives you an extra little bit of time to deal with it. Plus the bonus extra favor I think you get from two monuments might make this um, completely fine for, for the Hathor players. So a little bit of a thing there. Now, Medjai here. This is a, um, well, I haven't actually written exactly how much this costs. This is an interesting technology that I'm, testing at the moment this is one of the big changes in uh 0.5 is that Medjai now spawns three mercenary cavalry and two mercenary infantry at your temple which uh is weird your first temple not every temple your first temple it's weird it's very very different uh, i believe it comes out of the temple as well you can put it out of the temple and the town center i believe you can train it in but not really much point in um getting it out of a out of a town center unless you're full villages uh but it it trains these mercenaries out of your temple so the idea would be you put a temple on your on your town center on the front you delete the hometown temple you build you get this uh this technology and it gives you a big boost for for 60 seconds because these or 30 seconds whatever it is i can't remember but the the mercenary pop out and they help you for that and then they die and then that 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 technology is gone but you got that boost very unique technology interested to see how it's going to go it might be too weak it might be costed too much i think it's something like 300 gold 20 favor or something like that if you compare it to how much a mercenary cost by itself it's about right um and it's a and it's a burst of um defense or a burst of offense for for a hathor player uh okay moving on to norse this is a quality of life change to to start things off the ox cart gets uh re, re uh hp regen um i wanted to get the ox carts to repair but i couldn't work out how to do it so this is um this is a bit of a just a quality of life help for the ox carts i'm one of the things i hate the most is people targeting ox carts and it's just it's just annoying. It's like the ox cart got down to half HP. So now I send some units in and I snipe it off and my opponent has to get another ox cart out. This is just to prevent that from happening. You can still kill off ox carts fairly easily by just going in and sniping them, but you have to really focus on sniping them instead of dwindling it down or whatever. Uh, okay, so the Norse build rate's been buffed for the docks, basically. For some reason, Ulfsarks build docks slower than every other civilization. I don't understand why. It's just what happens. So I've changed that uh villagers can now construct the town centers as well this is a big norse boost boost this one here villagers construct and dwarves construct the town center at one speed um which i believe is the same as everyone else uh so everyone is building at one speed uh the reason for this mostly is that in the late game norse loses the late game so much easier than every other civ why? Because if Norse loses a town center, they can't get it back up. They have to put all of their military population onto building the town center while their opponent is just using their military population to kill you. Plus, they've got already 20 population more than you because you lost the town center and they just can't get it back. Compare that with Egyptian who puts a pharaoh and puts 20 villages onto the town center to get it back up. They get it back up in a heartbeat. Um, and it's just not fair. So this, while I think it helps norse in the early game as well as a unintended side effect uh and it helps them get the boom going as well in the early game it also allows them to play around some cheese that happens uh, like shifting sands cheese or whatever onto uh, infantry units that can get stolen whatever it, it, it helps norse out in the early game and in the late game and in the mid game and just general generally helps them out and i think this is going to be able to balance out this next change quite a bit so one god power i hate it's my most hated god power in the game it's ragnarok i hate using it i hate it being used against me i hate watching it nine times out of ten. One time out of ten ragnarok is really really fun uh and i, and I love that but nine times out of ten it either just wins the game or it loses the game and i'm like well this was a great game until you clicked ragnarok and yes there's other god powers that are like this think lightning storm think earthquake um think tartarian gate there's lots of uh there's lots of other god powers like this but it, the game never quite it, it doesn't feel right ragnarok just doesn't feel right to me so i'm changing this one and this is a change from patch 0.2 to 0.5 so this is another one that needs to be tested out i'm changing it so that you get a well of erd it's called well of ragnarok whatever uh well of erd ragnarok whatever it is but it automatically produces five heroes of ragnarok every 60 seconds 
and this is for free. You get five Heroes of Ragnarok, that is 15 population, for free. Is that how math works? Yep. Uh, every 60 seconds. If you compare this to the Plenty Vault, which is what the comparison I'm going for is, Plenty Vault gives 600 resources every, uh, every minute, basically. Heroes of Ragnarok are roughly worth in terms of, in terms of stats about 150 resources. So this is giving 750 resources. It's giving a big boost of that at once rather than a trickle. So it's a little bit different and you don't get to choose where it's sent. Um, and that's how it's going to work. Now, in my opinion, Balder and, um, Balder and Hephaestus are really, really similar. Yes, Hephaestus gives a really, really big technology in, um, in Forge of Olympus, but I think that the, the Fire Giant is the big myth unit for, for Norse, Colossus is the big myth unit for Greek, um, the upgrade for the battle ram is really going to help uh the late game for ra for, for for norse the, the upgrade to the raiding cavalry really really helps and i think that the help of uh of having some ragnarok heroes for the late game to deal with myth units is really really going to help as well as they're going to be able to push the the norse player is going to consistently be able to push themselves above 160 population going up to 175 population dropping back down to 160 up to 175 it's going to be really really interesting to see how this works another change here is very very much geared at helping the early game of norse where i think uh, or not even just the early game just the general process of norse surviving in the game to get to the late game i think that a lot of players agree that norse the reason why norse needs to rely so much on ragnarok is because they just can they just kind of struggle with like getting to that late game they just struggle so they kind of need to click ragnarok and they end up having to click it or they lose and that's how it works so we're giving a train time reduction across the board for for norse uh as well as giving the norse raiding cavalry and throwing axemen a hp increase of five percent this is a really small boost to the HP of these two units, but I think it's going to be enough to really see this Ragnarok change and see how I want this to go and see if it is unbalanced or not. The idea is I want to see Norse hitting the Mythic Age in an equal position, clicking Ragnarok and seeing if it's enough to um, keep the game going, seeing if it's busted, seeing if it's not. Uh, and just saying, great, you go now and, and you get to play a late game. And I think, personally, I actually really, really like Norse late game. I think Norse late game is the most fun out of all of the civilizations. You get to run around with your infantry units, dropping side builds, walling everything up and having a lot of fun there. But you never get to see it because you just click Ragnarok. So this is the idea here. Um, Norse late game also getting a, a big, big buff to, to, um, to portable rams. This might be busted, but um, there's a reason for this. And we'll see that in the, well... It's just, uh, it'll, this one might get changed back, but I haven't yet seen it used, so I don't know if it's busted or not. Anyways, moving along. Atlantean is another one that's been changed considerably. Uh, we've moved Atlantean villages now to two population. This is gigantic. Um, Atlantean three population versus two population. This is effectively increases the the need to manage your economy by a, a quite a bit um the they train faster they have less hp um it means that the, you have the same amount of manners so there's less protection for your for your villages you can lose villages much easier raiding atlantean should be much easier now which i always is always my problem with atlantean is that the the raiding is just so obnoxious like I, I i send my he sends his units to raid me i lose two villages i send my um units to raid him he garrisons the villages loses out on uh, a couple of seconds of idle time and then i'm like well that wasn't worth it so hopefully the fact that atlanteans gonna have more citizen means that it's gonna be easier to raid them and they have to deal with it a bit more so atlantean becomes a little bit more skillful to play is my hope obviously the building rate's gone down um gather rates gone down farms have gone down uh, and now the interesting thing starts so the only civilization that can like that is really good 
in um, for Atlanteans seems to be a not civilization. The only god that is good for Atlanteans seems to be Uranus. Why is this the case? Uh, it's because the Cairo Ballister is an absolute rubbish unit for the most part. Now, Kronos kind of makes it work. And I think we're seeing a little bit of a resurgence of this unit with Kronos as people are like, why is Kronos so weak? Well, it's because you play him like Uranus and it doesn't work. Anyways, neither here nor there. I've decided I'm going to try and rework the Cairo Ballister, give Atlanteans a more rounded composition in the early game uh, and see how it works. So we're giving Arcus uh, in the classical age with 14 range, obviously they get a free medium upgrade and every uh, every range, every upgrade is giving those Arcus an extra two range per upgrade. So you get the Arcus out, it's going to have 16 range in the classical age compared to the Toxodi, which has got, I believe, 15 range. So one more range than the Toxodi. Um, obviously it has less damage than the Toxodi and everything else, but that's there. Uh, and that's going to be in the Classical Age, which is really big for Gaia and Kronos. So they're going to have some fun with that one, not needing to build the Terma. Uranus is still going to have their speedy Terma, and they can still utilize that and still enjoy it. There is a Terma change coming as well. We'll get to that soon. The Cairo Ballister is now in the Palace and available in the Mythic Age. This is a change from 0.2 to 0.5. It's now in the Palace. Uh, in the mythic age and it's going to be the long range myth uh long range siege weapon for the late game of the atlantean which you're, you're you guys are now asking well what happened to the fire siphon we'll get to that so basically the cairo baluster is really similar to the baluster of the norse civilization really similar to the baluster of the norse civilization so it's pretty good against units. It's pretty good against buildings. It's a a unit you want to be protecting really nicely because it dies really easily um there are is a lot of room for changing this unit and making it unique. I think I've made it have less range than the um, than the baluster. Uh, there's lots of there's lots of little things you can do to change this. So uh, we'll we'll see how it goes and if I want to make a change here or there. But at the moment, I'm I'm, I'm interested to see how it's going to work. The fire siphon, however, is now a heroic age siege weapon. It's a melee-esque siege weapon in that its range is two to three, which means it has to sit right next to the building to attack it, similar to the siege tower, similar to the, um, the portable ram, similar to even the Heliopolis to some degree. Uh, so that's where it's going to be. And it's got stats to reflect that of a melee siege weapon. Um, yes. So that, that's, that's where we're fixing that. We're making the siege much more siege impacty and rather than being a weird unit. And there is an argument that I am making the uniqueness of Atlantean go away a little bit, but, uh, I'm interested in seeing how this works and I can always move it back towards the end. And, uh, there's always a world in which I can just leave this change that Atlanteans got, um, and change Atlantean back to completely normal, but I'm testing this out. I want to see how it works. Uh, so then we come in and we see the destroyer is now an infantry unit and it's a counter infantry unit for Atlantean. Now, I believe that Atlantean is missing their counter infantry unit because the Cairo Ballister is kind of so weak. Um, there are obviously times in which the Cairo Ballister is really strong, but there are times in which it's really, really weak. Example being uh, Loki. Loki is really, really strong against um, Loki Hursa, really, really strong. Ragnarok, Ragnarok, really, really strong. Uh, mass infantry units, really, really strong against uh, like mass Ulfsark, really, really strong against Atlantean. This unit being a heroic age counter infantry unit, similar to the Hypaspist, is really, really going to help out against those sorts of civilizations. And I'm excited to see how uh, specifically Loki is going to deal with it, but also, also other, other civilizations like, I guess, Odin uh, and any sort of infantry spamming idea that comes against um, the the Atlantean civilization. I'm interested to see how that's going to work. Now, finally, we see the Terma has gotten the Peltaz treatment. It's now three population. It costs more resources. It's got six track rating. Um, it's much, much better, but it's it's much, much um, more expensive and, and, and three population. So it's not a spammable unit, but it's going to be much more accurate. And I think it's going to reward players who are going to micro this unit in small balls much better. So for example... If you shoot the Terma with say three ball, uh, like three groups of three Terma, you have nine Terma out and you put them into three groups and you can attack one Tox, two Tox, three Tox. You can kill all those Tox in that one shot and move on to the next one. Also, 
uh, civilizations like uh, like Ra as well, going to be able to take out enemy Terma. Uh, also, Aranus War is going to be a lot less silly with the uh, with the um, with the Terma Micro. Uh, it's going to be much more focus fire orientated, trying to um, deal with the overkill. Not overkilling is going to be a big thing. All right, now the fun changes. Relic changes. This is um, unfortunately one thing that I don't really know how to do. And maybe someone can see this and, and let me know if it's possible. Uh, if you're a modding genius. Uh, the relics, they don't have their language file updated. But this is what happens with all of the, the relics. Uh, I've changed all the bad relics that I think are bad. Uh, and I've changed them to be something that I think is good. So we'll see how it goes. So Odin's wand here. Technologies cost 10%. Favor, less favor. So Odin's Wand is a, a relic which only affected the temple uh, and it affected resources and favor. Now, instead of that, it's affecting all technologies that cost favor across the board. So it's, I've taken away the reduction in, um, reduction in, in, uh, what do you call it? In, in resources uh, and not favor resources. And I've just given it to favor and it's across the board. So that'll be nice to get a little bit less of a, oh, I, I have a upgrade I want to get in the temple. Let me get this relic versus, oh, I have rel I have upgrades I want to get throughout the game. Let me get this relic. You know, it's going to be a much more much must grab relic kind of thing. Pandora's box here. This is an interesting one. Pandora's box only affected myth units. Now it affects everything, but I've moved it to 10%. So you're just going to get that big, big sweeping boost to all of your production and it's going to be nice. Uh, Canopic Jar of Imseti is now a 10% boost to inf infantry HP. This one used to be a reduction in infantry train time, which was never really useful. So an extra 10% um, boost to infantry HP. Uh, big boost there. It's going to be a must grab relic for infantry users. Uh, Buhen Flagstone. This one is, used to be walls cost less or something like that, which was obviously really, really silly because walls are already really cheap. So villages build 5% faster. This is going to be nice. Uh, Titan's Treasure, obviously we never saw this one getting grabbed and now it's uh, fitting that a Titan's Treasure would give you resources and it's basically a mini plenty vault giving you 60 resources a minute instead of 600. Is that right? 60 resources a minute? Wait, I don't believe it is. Maybe it is. Uh, no, six food, six, not 60 resources a minute. It's 20, uh, 18 resources a minute at six, six and six. I, 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 I saw this and I was like, <laughs> I, I thought this was per second, but no, it's not. Okay, so per minute, it's um 24 resources. So just a little bit of a boost, kind of in line with all of the other resource trickle relics. Uh, Guys, Book of Knowledge now giving you an economic upgrade of uh, your economic upgrades cost 10% less. Obviously fitting with Gaia being, that's how Gaia works, but it's a lot, I think it's a lot less than what Gaia's reduction is. So it's just a nice little assistance there. The Pegasus Relic has been buffed. Now it doesn't cost any population. Uh, Ship of Fingernails is an interesting one. Now it gives you one cow every two minutes. This one might get buffed to every minute. Not 100% sure, but every two minutes, allowing you to um, get a whole bunch of more safe food throughout the game with this relic is going to be really, really nice. Uh, Monkey Head, we're buffing this one to increase it to 4.0 speed. So it feels nice to move around with the army uh, instead of being really, making you really, really slow. Uh, Head of Orpheus here, infantry and archers move 5% faster. This is a big, big buff. I'm excited to see how this one's going to work. It's it's um, uh, it's um, basically huge for Uranus because Uranus has already got a movement speed buff at 10%. Now going up to 15% with this relic. Think about that in relation to what the hero relic does for Loki. So obviously Uranus is going to be super happy with that relic, but Loki is super ha happy with his own uh, hero movement speed relic and... Yeah, that's how relics work. Sometimes they can be busted with a god, but overall, I'm interested in how this one's going to work. Uh, Arrows of the Alpha increases projectile um, throwing human units track rating five to six. So your Toxo is going to have six track rating. They're not going to miss cavalry anymore unless they're above six speed. The, the, your um, throwing axemen aren't going to miss either. So it's a really, really interesting um, relic just to see how it's going to go, whether it's busted or not. I mean, it might be busted, but that means it's a must grab relic. So uh, interesting to see how that's going to go. I have Ornlu. Uh, I've just boosted this one up by 5%. I didn't never thought that I have Ornlu is really worth it at 5%. So a 10% bonus damage is going to be nice for your counter infantry. Uh, Blanket of Empress. So 
this one might be too weak. I might be changing this one. I'm looking at it. I'm still, here's a question for you guys in the, in, in the comments is, um, what can I do for Egyptian here? Because Egyptians military, uh, sorry, Egyptians economic buildings are free. So I've made economic buildings 25% less. Uh, so what can I do for Egyptian here? So let me know what you think. That one has to be added. Or this, or a completely different change for this relic is more than welcome. I'm looking for something to do with uh, helping out the what what a what a blanket uh, over your entire civilization would look like. So um, how how that would kind of work? I don't know. Let me know. I don't know. I've got no ideas at the moment. So Tower of Cestus, another really interesting relic here. This one is going to give you a tower every 120 seconds. So a defensive relic. This is spawning at your first temple. So you could potentially get uh, get this relic, put it into a different temple, delete your home temple, and potentially get a, a free tower on the front. Interested to see how Kronos is going to be using this one, for example. Uh the Girdle of Hippolyta next is just a boost to the archer damage up to 10%. Pygmalion Statue, I've always hated this relic. Instead, it's going to, instead of a boost to the villager HP, it's going to be a regeneration of villager HP. So that'll be nice for, for players to pick up as well without being broken. Uh, Hard as Folly, this one's interesting. It's uh, It spawns a unique obelisk, not an obelisk that the Egyptian plays. It spawns a 50 line of sight obelisk. So a huge amount of line of sight for you to have. Uh, it's 10 less than a lighthouse. So lighthouse has got 60 line of sight. If you can picture how much you get with that, this is a 50 line of sight one. So that's fantastic there. Eye of Horus, the next one. This one's really, really cool. It reveals every gold mine on the map, which is really, really cool. So you're not, you know, you're not going to find yourself... Um, uh, missing any, rel uh, any gold mines. And I believe... It reveals all around the gold mine for a split second. So if your opponent's got a mining camp there, it'll show that the mining camp is there. So you know that they're on that gold mine. So a little bit of map hacks for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so System of Bast next. Uh, this one's an also an interesting one. It might seem busted, but 10% reduction in villager train time might seem busted, but it's really not as crazy as you might think. Uh, I believe uh, it's worth half a villager every two minutes or something like that. Uh, it's really not as crazy as you think. It's good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's going to be busted. The next one, Staff of Dionysus, is just a reduction in farm cost by 10%. Uh, this is a relic that I don't understand why it's not in here. 10% reduction to farm cost is going to be really nice, much better than a... Uh, Increase the villager carrier capacity that most players don't like. Fenner's Offender is now a hunt bonus of 10%. Really, really nice one here to grab for the high hunt maps. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some maps where it's not going to be very useful, but uh, it's much better than killing a, an animal in one shot and we protect some uh, set players from, uh, from this relic as well. <laughs> uh shard of blue crystal uh this one was a weird relic that no one really understood so instead of leaving it there i've just changed it to be a wood bonus of 10 percent, which um should be worth grabbing every single time now there's no reason not to grab it uh and now osberg wagon has had a slight nerf to remove the cheaper caravans that's the patch if you guys want to play it it's available for voobly at the moment um to download uh and if you have any suggestions, I'm very, very much excited to hear what you guys think. If you think something's going to be absolutely busted, uh, definitely let me know and then prove it with your own gameplay. Uh, and I'm excited to see people playing on this one. If you guys enjoyed this and enjoy this kind of content, definitely leave a comment on uh, on the uh, below. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next game.